Okay, so uh, the date is the 18th of uh, October, 2018. Uh, I'm Paul Goldie and I'm sitting here with John Henry. Hello, John. Hey, mate. How are you? Good, good. Um, and today we're just going to have a, a chat about, uh, well, I guess how we, uh, we started doing uh, the creation of content or becoming content creators, uh, how it started as a hobby and has uh, maybe moved on to something else. Now, uh, firstly, how long have I known you for, John? Oh, go on. Almost 20 years now. 20 years. So I've been waiting to do this interview for a long time. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Now, uh, let's go back to, I guess, possibly uh, my first uh, uh, memory of our collaboration, which was the uh, our, our, our cycling video that we did at Rebold Hill. Actually, it goes further back. I'll, you further. I'll be pleased. The first video we ever did together was the Audi commercial. I'll tell it. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. So what did we film that on? Uh, your camera at the time, which was, you know... I think it was like a sixty dollar six megapixel or something like that. That's you know, great. it was just a yeah. It wasn't GoPro or anything like that. Um, I didn't even own a camera at the time, so yeah. And we did that Audi commercial down at the beach. And we edited we edited the movie. I think in Microsoft Movie Maker. Yeah, I believe so. And uh, and why did we get into that? I think we were looking at ways to promote our social media I guess and we found that video was possibly well we'd learned that video was the best method of doing such I know in the beginning we were always um, interested in creating websites or putting things we're interested on interested in on websites and yes. you know um, I guess as a way of being able to do those things all the time and not have to have a normal job but the social media aspect we were both very not into being on camera or recorded or um, social media wasn't really our thing. Yes. And it's something that, well, this day and age you have, that is the, you know, that is the platform in which to launch yourself off of. You're so we had to right. get used to it and we had to be ready for it. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So um, going back to that then video, what do you remember from that, uh, that video and that experience? Oh, a few fun I like the funny thing that I always remember is <laughs> as the video goes and it's, we've created the illusion where the car's, Accelerate. actually accelerating but the revs are going up but you see that the uh, speedometer isn't going anywhere because <laughs> we're just parked revving the car that's filming yeah. the odometer yeah because uh it wasn't safe to i guess drive and film at that, that time and that, oh yeah yeah that's right and also waiting for that jogger there was a jogger and oh. it was in the background and we knew that if we kept filming afterwards he would be he would have skipped along yeah. <laughs> that, yes no absolutely so um when did you actually make, what was your first video? Did you record your first video that you made by yourself or? My first video by myself was, I think it was my first vlog, which is more of like, I haven't, I don't have a set vlog. It was mainly just to give it a go. Uh, I've done four or five in total, just to sort of test out what I can do, how it formats, how to format it and, you know, how to edit it. Which, yes. Yeah. And that led on to, um, you did a fantastic uh, video for the uh, bottle shop and karaoke night. Yeah, the open mic night. Um, I had no, um, that video turned out really well. Yes. For, I had no equipment, all I had was my phone. <laughs> and that's why it's very grainy, the footage, because it's, but it somehow came together really well. Well, I don't think you'd want something too um, saturated and colourful. You want to have a sort of graininess to that sort of... Uh... It looks like a dark, dingy sort of jazz cellar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm. absolutely. And you and I have done a number of other collaborations. Uh, what was like your first main acquisition of equipment? Because uh, you mentioned we didn't have it. We just had a basic camera when we yeah, started. Yeah, first camera was your camera. But um, my first actual camera, I think, was the GoPro Hero 3. Yes. I bought it second hand for about 150 bucks. Yeah. That was it. I still have it, even though it's a little broken now, but yeah. And then following that, uh, you also then got um, into... Oh, no. Yes, of course. Got into drones. Drones, yeah. yes. I You're was... the one that got me into drones. Yep, yep. I remember I had the Phantom 4. Um, it took me a month of having it in the box and reading about it before I decided to take off. Yes, yes. And the first thing I did was fly to the basketball pole, <laughs> like the pole to the basketball ring, so... <laughs> Um, the Phantom, may it rest in peace, is in a few pieces at the moment, but the, as you know, I've got the Mavic and the rest of it still. 
Can we ask about what happened to the Phantom? I can't exactly answer that. I lost it at some point, and I think when I it's gone to go back to its home point, but I wasn't there to guide it through the trees. Yes. So it's nicked the trees and dropped. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the, the whole fuselage is one part of it snapped. Uh, the camera doesn't work. It still flies with a bit of gaffer tape, so <laughs> it will fly again one day soon. Just yes. when I get time. And since then, though, um, you've you've got another drone. The yep. what have you got? Oh, I've got the uh, Mavic Pro and the Tello, and that's it. Oh, no. and the uh, Phantom One, the which Mavic, I'm very proud of. The Mavic Pro. Um, you've actually used that for a number of our co collaborations. Um, you're an amazing drone pilot. Uh, describe like the process of how you learn how to fly the drone and also film at the same time because it's not an easy task to do. It's not. It's not. Um, watching where you... I guess your first thing when you're starting out is to be... to not let the thing fly off... Air, not to, to not fly off out of your sight yes. and be recording. Stay behind it. That's easier to control when you're behind it. Not When you're in front of it or off to the side to, of it, you're, you're disorientated as to what's the front, what's the back. So stay behind it and stay at a low speed and stay like you know in control of it i guess also with filming it's it's lots of small slow uh steady movements not fast uh fast movements which make good footage yeah which um, unfortunately the mavic is not the best for it's, it's a bit more of a speed drone you know? it's a fantastic piece of kit and uh it films in 4k um and yeah we've used that for a number of yeah. different it's great because it folds up into a you know tiny package compared to the phantom oh it's so small and mm. portable absolutely as a creator, what have been some of your biggest influences, online influences, I guess, other uh, other creators online that have that have either helped or inspired you or helped you learn? Well, I guess it wasn't until we started really wanting to kick it up a notch in terms of what we're creating and what we're, um, you know, uh, the kind of content we wanted to make. And that's when I started, or you recommended a few people like Peter McKinnon and uh, Casey Neistat and uh, there's, so many, there's heaps of others I just... Right now, I can't rattle them off. But may, may I ask just yeah. may I ask quickly? You, you mentioned kick it up a notch. Now, was there any particular reason? Was there feedback from from people online that made you wanted to kick it up a notch? Or no, I just sort of realised that was it? It was something that I wanted to do in a more professional man, in a more professional um, you know setting and a more professional um yeah you, know, you enjoyed it and i did i it allowed me to express myself and to show things that i'm interested in um which i don't usually tend to do i keep a lot of my people don't think don't realize that i have a huge collection of collectibles and yes, yes. pop culture items um so this is a way to bring that out yeah yeah absolutely um you actually came along uh i mean it was only the start of this year that we were doing uh, i guess more adventure style videos and during the course of the year we sort of um had opportunities which arose for us to do this on a on a more professional level which sort of i think also contributed to it um we were filming charles yep. uh, uh we did the ymca commercial um and there's been a few other things in between then which has sort of seen our hobby go from something less of a hobby to almost uh amateur sort of freelancers. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I tend to more lean towards wanting to make videos for myself yes. than for other people, just because other people are a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with. And they all want it a certain way, even if even if it's the wrong way. It's very hard to change their I minds. I believe all creators can, uh, mm. can empathise with that. Definitely. Yeah. They've spent hours tossing and turning, uh, trying to get a project ready for a customer, and the customer yeah. doesn't understand what they've been through. Whereas the way, if I'm just making videos for myself, I'm the only arse I'll have to deal with. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, as a creator, what have been some of the biggest struggles, like, or... Um, or things that maybe weren't explained to you? Is it time in editing? Is it framing a shot? Is it planning a, a scene? Is it writing a script? What? The... I guess I still haven't come to terms with how long editing does take to do. <laughs> People don't realise that even just a two minute video is on the on that, when you, I use iMovie, so down on that bottom bar, it's miles long. Yes. You know, and <laughs> so there's that factor. Then there's the, I know what I want it to look like. Yes. In my mind, it, you know, <laughs> looks perfect but yes. trying to get that onto the screen is a lot harder 
Absolutely. And then matching it with music, doing the cuts, and uh, and you really get an appreciation for what editors using like Adobe and these other like Final Cut and other other suites go through. Oh, doing larger projects, like yeah, big time. Can't even imagine it. Um, what have been some of the most uh, enjoyable projects that you've done, um, whether collaborations with myself or, uh, or videos you, you've done yourself? Uh, we mentioned the bottle shop and the, um, the karaoke night. Yeah, um, I did really enjoy doing my uh, like the vlogs. I did enjoy that because I, I started to see that my style was, vlog style was a bit more like a, uh, like a, not a sick, a bit like a sitcom, I guess. Uh, there's always some catchy song or an opening to it. Um, Lots are very personal, and they, yeah. they you do open up a lot to yourself to the audience. I, I'm surprised that there is on YouTube a video of me sitting in my garage from two different cam camera angles. Pretty cool. So, yep, one black and white, one uh, color, and I'm talking about why I'm vlogging, and you know that I wish I'd started it sooner because then people would understand a bit more about me. I would probably, I'd be in a different place in my life now if had I started earlier. Um, but that's, well, you've seen that besides that, that young kid Tyrone that uh, I recently filmed for. I mean, he's 20 and he started vlogging. I would do anything to be able to do it. But then again, when we were 20, I don't know if the technology existed fully for us to completely make really good quality. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, content. Without having a million dollar budget. But having said that, I only started editing in oh, two or three months ago. And, and how'd you learn? You showed me uh, for about half an hour and then boom, I was off. No, you pretty much went online, you learned a bit yourself and... Oh, now, you like after you, showed, after you showed me how to edit a clip and I went and reproduced it straight away and then continued on from there, that very night uh, after you showed me, I made my first video pretty much. Yeah. And then from there, whenever I've had an issue, I usually Google it and yes. watch a YouTube video or read about it and that's how I learn everything these days. I don't know why. People ask a question about something, I go, did you Google it? And they never, yeah. they're like, oh, okay. How do you not do that? There's pretty much a tutorial online for everything. Yeah. Um, Even how to do it the wrong way. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Do you think you need thousands of dollars to be able to make a decent, because I, uh, thousands of dollars are worth of equipment to be able to make a decent video? Do you think no, you need that? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Um, in fact, I haven't even got a, you know, super duper, you know, expensive camera. Um, I just got the Sony Action Cam uh, that I'm yet to, I'm going to hook it up with one of the gimbals. The gimbals are my favorite thing. They're pretty they cool. really are um, something special. But then again, with the, this new Action Cam, apparently that it, like from what I've seen online and what I've read about, you almost don't need a gimbal. <laughs> it's, it's got so that. Good. Yeah, it's that good. But no, I enjoy the gimbals. Um, I think they're great. The Osmo is great, and that uh, G6. I don't know what the brand is, but yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. Panasonic. No, the uh, gimbal. Oh, the gimbal. Oh, the, yes, the, the one um, behind, the one on the shelf there. Ah, uh, yes, the. Uh... I'm yet to use that where it hasn't shit itself. Oh really? Yeah, I've mounted the camera on it several times, and you turn it on, and the camera does a flip, and it goes bing, 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 as it bangs into itself. Oh, and, right. So it's all good. I just haven't had a chance to sit down. As you know, I've been busy, busy. working at the family business. John, I appreciate your time. Now, I guess uh, I won't take up too much more, but in summary, if there's one thing that you could uh, give advice to creators looking to get started, what advice would it be? Don't. There's already too many of us doing it. Piss off. No. Um, it would be to... Don't overextend yourself in what you buy to get started. Learn how to do it and appreciate it f with the equipment you have before you go all hell for leather and buying all the expensive stuff. Produce a decent amount of content. Um, find your style first before getting into you know expensive equipment. And find whatnot. your niche. Find your niche, yeah. Find what what interests you. If you're a videographer or a photographer or an editor or a producer or yeah. an audio or yeah. And having said that just then, like uh, what interests you, because of the internet, you might know, you might have no one in your life that likes the same thing as you. Guaranteed there's someone out there in the world that does. Yes. Multiple people. Yes. And that is your market. Just because uh, no one else around you likes it doesn't mean it's not popular. Well, um, leading on from that, do you think that maybe some people, I mean, that's, that's a good point. I, I don't think we would have been where we are with the opportunities we have had we not put a lot of our videos online. Um, 
I'm very selective still. I'm a bit, I've still got that perfectionist bug where I'm like, I have more videos sitting on my computer done that I haven't put up <laughs> than I do actually have on my YouTube. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I'm, I, I can understand that. Um, Daniel Monaghan told me, just put it up because if you look back in two years and then look back at that first one, don't take it down, you'll see how far you've come. I'm just going to look at it and go, that was crap. Yeah, I get what you, I get what you, he's trying to say and what you, and you've actually said that to me before, but I still find it hard. I guess I remember all that. I, I remember how I start, started off. I just wanted to be good now. I want it to be what I want it to be. Yes. If that makes sense. Without having to, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's uh, something that I look forward to getting back into in a more in a more full on way very soon. Before the end of the year, I want to have you know some more content coming out. Yes, and get some regular like some consistency with my content. That would be good. Well, yeah. Hopefully, we can bring something on a regular schedule, um, whether it be audio or video. Um, we'll definitely be trying to bring regular content online because I think uh, you know with the opportunities we've had so far. Um, if we continue to do it and step it up, they'll only continue to increase. Um, yeah, so we've been extremely lucky so far, especially because we do live in Perth, which is fairly isolated. Is. Um, finding other creators and not having a background, I guess, in like we, we weren't media students. We didn't study this. Oh, we would never picked up a camera before. Yes. And we've taught high ourselves school. everything. Even in high school, I never touched a camera. I, I we never had that as a subject. Year 10, I yeah? think. Yeah, once. No, we never had it as a subject. Yeah. And the, the fact that in, you know, two years taught yourself Where? a whole new skill. I've only really kicked it up a notch this year. Bryce has as well. He has too. Um, I look forward to seeing what next year will bring. For yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, John, thank you for your time. It's been a fabulous, uh, a fabulous chat. Um, John's details will be down in the link section below. And, uh, and you'll see more of John and I throughout uh, 2018 and 2019. Sorry thank about that. <laughs> Well, thank you for your time, John. Um, leave your comments and questions below. Thanks.